Chipotle stock has just reported their Q4 2021 earnings. The stock is up 7%, which is about 100 bucks for this stock, seeing as they're now up to $1,500 during the after hour session here. The company has just committed to repurchasing another $200 million worth of shares, and they have been doing this over the past quarter. So is Chipotle cheap enough for us to pick up some shares and add this stock to our portfolio? Because as we can see, it's been growing quite a bit in the past few years. Well, that's what we're going to find out in this video. How's it going? Welcome to Everything Investing. I hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to take a look at Chipotle's Q4 results. We'll do a deep analysis into the financials. We'll take a look at some of the technical setups that are currently in play. So stick around for that as well. And we'll conclude with the valuation of the business to see whether or not this is something we as retail investors should add to our portfolios or not, and what this earnings release means for investors. And if you enjoy the analysis and the investing perspective, please like and consider subscribing for more of this content. So just before we jump into the earnings release, let's take a quick look at how the stock performed over the last few years. And really, as we can see, this stock has been in a very nice uptrend, up to highs of almost $2,000 per share and has recently found support down here at this 1350 level. Okay, this has been previous support numerous times and we can expect this to hold true as after earnings, we see that the stock is now up to this 1573 level. Let's look at this from an after hours perspective and what do we immediately see? We see this massive uptick which again is that about 7% increase in price after hours. Now, as retail investors, we must always keep in mind that the market has a tendency to overreact to positive news in the short term. And by that same token, they'll overreact to negative news. As a result, stocks are mispriced in relation to the value of their underlying business. And it's really our job to learn how to capitalize on this opportunity by determining the fundamental value of these businesses and recognizing when the price is, you know, excessively high or excessively low. So looking at this from a macro point of view and trying to get a direction on where we head from here, I mean, looking at this chart and seeing how the stock has reacted after hours, we are looking towards seeing some form of bounce in the stock and for this after hours momentum to continue throughout not only tomorrow, but throughout the next few months. As once we get into the financial report, you will see why the market is reacting the way it is. But immediately what we'll notice and what the stock is currently running into is there's some form of resistance up in this $1560, $1570 price range that is held as true resistance in the past. Um, however, once we've gotten through this range, it's held up as support. So really this is a key level now that we've broken through, again, it's going to act as key resistance until we break above. It will be key support. And then at which point the next resistance level will be at this level here. And then we're going to be looking to target pretty much all time highs from there. Now, to answer the question of why the market has reacted the way it has, let's take a look at their earnings report. So let's go through their earnings highlights that they reported for this Q4 report. We can see immediately that they beat expectations by about, let's say, $40 million, where they they came in at about $2 billion worth of revenue versus the $1.96 billion that was expected of them. Actually, year over year, that's about a 20% increase. When it comes to the earnings per share side of things, they came in at $5.58, beating expectations by about another $0.29. Cents. Again, this is just for the quarter. Now, when we look at this from an annual perspective, we can see right here, earnings per share actually increased about 82% year on year. That is insane growth. Now, the other thing that the market really liked about this report is that their margins are increasing quarter over quarter and year over year, especially their restaurant and digital sales. These are also increasing. The revenue year over year is up in the is up 26%. They've opened 215 new restaurants. And their outlook for the first quarter of 2022 has comparable sales growth in the mid to high single digits. So once again, that's another check mark. Now, that being said, let me point out something I did not like. And that was this. They ended up repurchasing about $168 million worth of stock at a price point of $1,750 during this past Q4. And if we compare that to where the stock is trading at now, they were purchasing shares up into this region the stock has since plummeted down here, but after this latest earnings release, the price has reversed back up to the upside. However, this is a red flag for me personally, because you never want to see shares being repurchased at all time highs, especially in this current market environment 
where interest rates are increasing. There's inflationary pressures. It's just not the time to be repurchasing shares at all time highs. And for that, it's a red flag for me. If they were repurchasing shares down into this region, when there was a massive correction in the stock, you know, down here, I mean, I have no problems. But at this point, that's my only issue so far with the earnings release. That being said, let's jump into the actual financial statements. So we talked about the press release. The company's revenues definitely did not disappoint and neither did the earnings side of things. But let's get into the financials. Okay, so starting with the statements of income, we see that, of course, Chipotle, a restaurant chain, has majority of their revenues coming from their food and beverage segment. There's no surprise there. They have a bit of delivery service revenue as well, and that totals their $7.5 billion worth of revenues for the year. And if there's one thing that we know about restaurant chains, it's that they have low margins. Restaurants almost always have a low margin business model. So that's why you'll see just in a second why Chipotle is so proud that they are increasing their margins as it's something the restaurant business as a whole struggles with. So anyways, of course, when you have revenues on food and beverage, you're going to have costs from your food and beverage packaging, especially for re restaurants. And that's what's taking up the bulk of the costs. We then have labor costs as well, and also notably other operating costs. And we get down here to this $6.7 billion worth in operating expenses on the $7.5 billion in revenue. That leads us right down here to our net income figure of $650 million for the year. Now, looking at this, from a year-over-year -year perspective, this almost doubled. And we can see the same thing if we look at their diluted earnings per share metrics. This also essentially doubled year-over-year. -year. I mean, exactly what you want to see, for, especially from a business you're looking to invest in. We want to see their operations are growing. We want to see their margins are growing. We want to also see that their cash positions are growing. And we'll get to that in just a second. But yes, again their margins are increasing year over year. So again, this gets a nice check mark in terms of their income statement. Now, moving on to their balance sheet for this past quarter, we can see that their cash position has grown. That's a check. We have to also note that their income tax receivable did decline, and that's why you really year over year were relatively flat. Moving on, we'll get to total assets of about $6.6 .6 billion which is up year over year. Now, liability side, this is what we want to see. Nothing is jumping out to me in the current section. And if we look at the long-term section, it's not really what is here that's standing out to me. It's more so what's not here. And that's their long-term debt. I don't see the debt. That's check, right? They have uh, long-term lease liabilities of $3.3 .3 billion. Now, that's what you would expect from a restaurant chain. They need to have stores. They need to have physical locations for people to go in, order their food, have their food delivered. So you would expect this number to be higher. Other than that, that is their largest long-term liability. And I do not see any figures of debt. Again, another check mark. All right. And now we get to the consolidated statements of cash flows, my favorite section of the financial statements. And once again, we're presented with this figure that has grown and almost doubled year over year. This is their net income figure. We add back in some depreciation, some amortization, you know, the stock-based comp. We know how I feel about that. We get to this figure down here of $1.2 billion worth. Again, once again, this has doubled year over year from the $600 million one year ago. Once again, something we like to see as an investor or a potential investor. So we have $1.2 billion in operating cash flow. We pay out about $440 million worth of CapEx. So let's say that they have about $800 million worth of free cash flows for the fiscal year of 2021, which is up from the, let's say, $200 million that they had one year ago. So again, impressive, impressive. Financially, this business is a check, and that's exactly why it's priced at the high levels that it is currently. And what do they do with their free cash flows? That's really the main question that we got to figure out. If we come down here, we can see it's this. They're repurchasing their shares. That's their main focus right now. Their main focus is to repurchase their shares. They're not paying a dividend currently. They don't have any debt to pay down. So their main focus right now is to reward shareholders by repurchasing shares. Now, this was again, as if you recall, my main issue with this is the levels at which they're repurchasing shares. They've just committed to repurchasing another $200 million. The only issue I have is where they're repurchasing these shares. I'd rather them repurchase shares when the stock is declining than when it's appreciating in value. 
So is the fact that Chipotle is repurchasing their shares at all-time highs a cause for concern for investors? Uh, not necessarily. We've seen their ability to grow and produce cash flows in the past, and they are growing top line, bottom line, their cash flows. They're growing their margins even. This is amazing and exactly what you want to see from a potential investment and something we as retail investors need to take note of. So let's get into the valuation here. We see we have my calculator that I have up on the screen here. We're going to use the earnings per share metrics since they are repurchasing their shares. For me personally, I'll, I require about a 10% return on my investments. They are not currently paying a dividend, so I have not added it into this calculation. And we can see immediately right here, uh, if we give them... You know, let's say for the next five years, they grow for about 25%. And then for the next five years, let's say they decrease growth metrics to about 15%. On a 20 PE multiple, the stock should be priced at $942. Now, this is a conservative ex estimate. Looking at what they currently do, however, we can give them about a 30 to 35% growth rate for this current for the next five years and the subsequent five years will give them about a 15 percent growth rate let's say there's a decent drop off at that point giving them a 30 pe multiple yeah this stock could be valued north of two thousand dollars per share so if we're looking at this from a standpoint where we can expect them to continue to grow at these high levels their shares to continue to be repurchased yeah we could see them up into this two thousand dollar level now if the worst case scenario happens what are we going to see Let's imagine that, you know, Chipotle for the next five years can only grow at about 15, 18%. And then for the next five years after that, they can only grow at 10%. Yeah, this is where the real problem is going to be. With a PE multiple of 15, I mean, we're looking at the stock price to crash all the way down to $400 per share. And this is really the issue with Chipotle stock. It's this growth multiple. So if they do not grow at the levels that they're currently growing at, we're going to see a massive decline in the stock price. And this is really the issue with any growth stock. When they're trading at high PE ratios like Chipotle is at a 58 PE currently, this is always going to be the problem. And it's the reason why Facebook recently dropped. It's because when their growth slows down, you see a massive correction in the stock. So that's my analysis of Chipotle Mexican Grill. From these levels, if we expect a 10% return, Yes, we can see this stock go up to, you know, north of $2,000 per share. But the one problem that we have is if there is some form of decline, then we'll see the stock really roll over. And that's what's going to be the issue as hedge funds, analysts, they're all going to just dump shares. And this stock is going to take a tumble. That's the risk and reward when it comes to Chipotle. And it's up to you as the retail investor in this situation to make your decision on whether this is a great investment for you or not. That being said... Thank you for watching if you got this far and until next time.